I am Chris Kaler. And I'm Amber Foss of Kajin Cosplay. And tonight we are back again with you guys with Bly. The Hunting of Bly Manor. Yes, episode 5. Yeah. Uh, the Altar of the Dead. Hmm? The one that's the the altar of the dead. moving from place to place. I swear to God, it changes sides every episode. Anyway, so last episode, what happened? Well, we kind of learned what happened for uh, Danny's past. Yes. She. Uh, came out to her fiance slash husband. Well, or, they weren't married, but okay, so fiance to a fiance slash childhood friend. Yeah, slash childhood friend. And he freaked out. Said, "Why did you do this to me? Get out of the car and get killed. Killed by another truck." So she blames herself a lot for yeah. that. Uh, because of that, she she's trying to get closer to Jamie, but Jamie, right? Gosh, mm -hmm. the names. Sorry. Jamie. She's trying to get closer to her, but. The memories are always around, and it's the guilt is like keeping her yeah. away. So at the end of the episode, she kind of got drunk, and then she decided to face the ghost of her f dead fiance, but not uh, not before we saw the woman in the lake, and yeah. that was fucking creepy. And we do have a theory that maybe Rebecca killed herself because she got possessed by the lean in the lake. Because think about and she it, she just went back into the lake and just got. Drive. I don't remember if we actually said that on camera. Or yes, we did. As in, like maybe since she doesn't have a face, she doesn't know who she is. She's looking for a pers for an identity, and so she sees herself in the the person she comes across, and then that's why she might have killed herself. Yeah, that's weird. But we'll. I mean, we're getting closer to the end, so we will see what what actually is going on very soon. I'm I'm sure of it. Yeah. So without further ado, let's jump in episode five and see what happens. Let's go. Alright. I kind of want to see more of the lady in the lake because she's so creepy and I kind of like the creepy stuff. I want to know who is she. Yeah. Because that's not the... I think that it might be the mom but you said that she doesn't know her name and we saw two names on the tombstones. That maybe it's one of, one of her, you know? The housekeeper knew more than most. The deep experience was never peaceful. And because she knew this ever since she'd first called Bly home, she would always find her way back to peace within her daily routine. An episode and centered around her. Finally! We can't count on the past. That's what I learned taking care of one. It's kind of what dementia is, isn't it? Memories fade or they're wrong. Any of us could die at any moment. So then... Think about it. We can't count on our future either. Oh my god, it's scary, I know, but Owen. You're young. Like you have a past, you have a future. You know, I'd argue you can count on both. Poor oh, sweet trunk. <laughs> he just lost his mommy as a right to be depressed. For yeah. a second. Now I noticed. <sighs> Maybe I'll go back to Paris. I don't think she can. I'm not sure. Say it with me. Anna Gross in Paris. What would I do in Paris? Eat croissants and, and, and drink good wine. And live, Hannah. Live. I gotta remember her name. Anna. Do you know the hell occurs to us in the bloody moment? So sorry to interrupt, but I'm turning into a pumpkin. Come on, Owen. Time to go home. Drive safe. I know the road. We'll be fine. It's all good. Yeah, like I said, Danny needs to find peace in herself before we need to start something with a. Uh, I kind of wanted to see her past and see stuff going on with her, you know? Right. You, you studied in Paris. Uh, yes, uh, for, for two years. Uh, best two years of my life, if I'm honest. I worked in a restaurant in the Marais. Oh, well, uh, well, I'm afraid this job might bore you. Why do you want to work at Bly? Because it's close to home. I'm looking at this as an opportunity to hone my skills. In, in Paris, I was a sous chef, which means they only let me chop vegetables. Here, I'll be putting everything together myself. It'll be a, a great learning experience. Hence the experimentation. Well, I have two children to cook for. The Mingo, they're here for holidays and summers. They've been good to me. 
And, and look, I know it sounds very upstairs, downstairs, but this is my home, and I take great pride in it. We need a cook who intends to stay on for a while. Yesterday, my, my mother thought it was 1962, and that I was my grandfather. And that's why I'm here. I need to make a living while I mind her. And that's when he started taking care of her. But I won't go running off. <laughs> I, I promise you that. That's that's not who I am. Have you, have you read Thomas Merton? He said, once we get past consciousness and identity and, and all of the things that occupy the front of our brains, you reach a transcendence. So if you take someone with dementia, for instance, and, and their consciousness is wearing away every day, right? You see underneath it and it's look i i don't know if it's transcendent but i'm learning a lot about being alive <laughs> i mean a lot when he says it about himself it's one thing i can keep thinking about the woman in the lake who lost her identity oh, as she as she reached transcendence <laughs> i don't know <laughs> Look like she was very like it's like she's she travels in moments of time almost like she's there and then whoop, she finds herself somewhere else. Mrs. Burrows, the Wingrays are here. Was that the previous nanny? I guess. Is she the woman in the lake? She had black hair. Does it change when you become a spirit? Maybe that's the mud. No. The fashion. <laughs> I know, but the mud. There's someone at the entrance of the Hello, the church. Ah, oh, that's Charlie in the back. Straight upstairs. Oh God, who am I kidding? They haven't heard a word. It I could definitely be her. How are things? Oh, well, you know, uh, same as always, Mom. Mrs. Gross, lovely to be back. Oh, lovely to have you back, sir. Hello, Anna. Lovely to see your face. And yours too, sir. They seem to be lovely people. Oh, that's really sad. But then what happened? Uh, and what's wrong with her? You'll bring those in directly, will you? But see, like she She's going in a, a straight line. Someone at the in the right on the right, sorry. She's going in a straight line, but it's almost like she's jumping. Don't make her fall. Funny, mate. Don't ever do that again, do you hear me? Look at you all flushed. You're pretty when you blush. Okay, that's Peter. Miles yeah. Peter. I, I didn't think Miles was gonna, you know, no. shake the ladder. No, but... no. Did she just relive her death? Like, what was that? Maybe. We can't count. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Our moments are supposed to be like chapters. Oh, that's not it, is it? They're not. They're like confetti. Like <laughs> season one callback. Probably why we always find her, you know, in her in her thoughts, and she's not really there, and she's like, oh, sorry, you know. Yeah. She's not even asking herself what's going on. Right? I. So <laughs> down, you'll bring your bloody skulls. Nothing that happened to her. We came back. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't even know who that was. I'm just in deeper than I thought, I guess. You 
You don't get to talk to me like that again. No, never, never. I, pr I promise. I do. I promise. Okay? Can I kiss you? <laughs> the crack. I would have to do some crack. Yeah. You think that maybe she cracked her skull and that's what happened? She sees the crack in her skull. <laughs> well, maybe. Like, maybe she got pushed somehow and yeah. she cracked the fucking wall. I don't know. Yeah. How strong would you have to be? <laughs> like, we don't know if she actually is dead. But seeing her go through these things doesn't make me think she's alive. I'm looking at this as an opportunity to hone my skills. In Paris, I was a sous chef, which means saying I let you chop vegetables. So, I'm sorry. Um, this is its going to sound strange, but haven't we already done this? Yes. But we have to do it again. It's okay. Let's get back to it. In Paris, I was a sous chef, which means they only let you cut vegetables. Here, I'll be putting everything together myself. It'll be a great learning experience. <laughs> <laughs> Miles is seven, and Miles is picky. Miles? Tell me more about him. What kind of boy is he? Oh, Miles is a good boy. Huh? The type to get possessed. He's sweet. He's trouble, but deep down, oh, he's a good boy. Has he ever crawled? Whatever would make you say that? Little boys can be very cruel. He is a good boy and he would never do anything to hurt you. Is that what you were going to say? Why would I make you say that? I don't know. He lost. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. He wouldn't hurt you. She keeps taking you know, my hair in the hand he's or what? Been himself since his parents died. Yeah, Did he thing. kill her? Oh, so many green green. What do you think you're doing? Hey. Oh my Are god, the direction in this episode. <laughs> Enjoying fag on a nice sunny day. Look, I know you, Miss Peter. Uh, and I know it's confusing the way he's run off. It is, Peter! If you want to keep his lighter, that's okay with me as long as you're safe with it. There's always but winner. you cannot, under any circumstances, be smoking. Or do you want to die a horrible choking death, hmm? Oh, Hannah. Honestly. Uh, Miles? It's not Miles! Honestly. Oh Miles, we're not please, I hope that my slash Peter didn't smash her head. Please, no. Oh, hello. Well, hello. But did Miles come in here? Just now? Come have a seat. I used to be a daddy's girl. <sighs> it's confusing for us, well, I imagine, for her. <laughs> until, of course, I grew up and I wasn't anymore. As far as he was concerned, my dream was far out of my reach. And he felt I needed to be reminded of that constantly. So when you find someone who truly believes in you, sometimes more than you believe in yourself, that you are smart enough and capable enough and tells you so, or you hold on to them and you don't let go. Not if they treat you like trash. Even if they're rough around the edges. Yeah. No, honey, you deserve perfect. better. I know what you're going to say, so don't. Well, if you know what I'm going to say, then you know why I'd say it. Look, I know, I know, I get he... I've never met anyone like him. Forgive me for saying so, Rebecca, but he's gets the shit out of me. You don't know him, Hannah, you don't. I think she knows him more than you do. The real him. Yeah, you're blind by the confettis. He scares me too. In That's a really huge red flag. <laughs> Being with him might be scary at times, but it's also exciting and fun. And for the first time in my life, that little voice in my head saying I'm not good enough has disappeared. It's gone. This is a difference between feeling good and feeling alive. The two aren't always the same. You worry too much. Okay, I've been with men like him before. No. No, that's not true. You told me yourself. You told me you never met anyone like him before. And you don't get to have it both ways. Hannah, oh, honestly. Well, I mean, Rebecca, I'm sorry I mentioned it. Right now, she spins because she wants to convince herself that she's doing the right child best thing with Peter. And Hannah is not... She fell down the well. Oh, shit. But when? 
I don't know, but that's that's a well. Oh, don't tell me that he pushed her in the well. Please no. He was possessed and he pushed her down the well. But when? First time we saw her, she was at the well, holding her head and confused. Oh my god. No. No. What are you doing on? 